Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Outer Range Episode 5. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, I think this is a really interesting episode for Cecilia, because she's kind of... I think I didn't... We don't really know about the rest of the family. Obviously, she brings her family to church, but she's definitely the most religious, and everyone's kind of dealing and faltering in this situation in their own regards and Cecilia I think is because she's always relied on religion and she had talked about it with uh, Royal maybe the last episode she had talked about how like for Royal it never meant as much to him as it does for her and she kind of feels lost without it even to the point she's at her bible study and she just like all oh, right uh, I feel a little lost then the, they went to go see Patricia which Cecilia tried to stay behind but you know, Patricia uh, noticed Cecilia and was like, oh, like, so, oh, you didn't bring anything like everyone else? That's a shame. And it's like, oh, what does you and uh, your group end up thinking about murder and, or, or killing and stuff like that? Because Patricia knows the family did. In fact, she's got her gut feeling that it's Perry just because of the way he acted at the funeral and stuff. So, there's that element to it. But Cecilia's guilt is getting the best of her because it's like, right, uh, it is a thing of protecting your family, but it's like, you know, when you also feel like you're going at this alone because she doesn't have Royal's help because he's literally going most of the episode off doing his own thing and she doesn't have him. There's the whole, especially because, um, I don't know what she meant to, but Autumn got in his head and got in her head when it's like, oh, why are you in my house, strange lady that's living on our land? Um, and it's like, right, uh, your husband, it's like, right, I know about the necklace. It's like, wow, I guess Royal made more of an attempt to be more open to her, with her about everything. Because I'm surprised he he didn't initially tell her about Autumn and stuff like that and everything that was going on with the um, Tillerson trying to buy the land. But I guess he told her about this. It's like, no, I know that's what this is about. It's poker. And I like Autumn's point of like, no, things aren't so black and white as like, things are not as binary as like winning and losing. But Cecile's like, when it comes to poker, yeah, it is. You lost it's my husband's necklace now, get out. But it's like, right, uh, has Royal been acting strange? And it's like, what do you mean? Like, he's keeping secrets. I'm like, why are you poking the bear like that? And I, that, which, that whole thing just shows you how, like, lost she is. Because I don't know if she knows that Royal cheated her, but it's still the thing of, like, the fact is, you never, she always, she's got this free spiritness to her, but she always feels like she's kind of... I don't know, there there feels to be some type of control she kind of has, and when Royal took that necklace, it seems like it knocked her off kilter. I mean, once again, everyone's off kilter. And so, Cecilia hearing from her, like, right, you know, knowing yourself is hard enough, how can you ever truly know someone else? Because it's like, oh, your husband's keeping secrets and stuff, and I think a lot of that resonates with Cecile. And, you know, because even later on when she's reading the Bible, you know, trying to gain some strength, some comfort in it, she sees Royal come back at near the end of the episode. And what does she do? She just, like, closes the book because it's like it's not giving her the same fulfillment. She's not getting the answers. The, the That faith, like, was such a steady rock for her. And that foundation's getting shaky now. So that's definitely interesting. Obviously, Rhett and uh, Perry are having their issues because... Perry's like, right, I should have handled that situation a little differently with Joy. I shouldn't have said what I said, um, and I should have said something different. And he's like, right, I'm sorry. And he's like, um, and Rhett's basically like, I shouldn't have ever stood up, stood up for you. Now I'm in this situation. But Perry's like, I won't let you take the fall for that, okay? But, you know... Rhett doesn't really believe him because you have more reason not to go to jail because you still have your daughter. So Rhett's probably like, I'm the one in the family that kind of has, maybe in his mind, is like, I'm the one that has the least to, lo um, to lose. You have a lot to lose. So like, maybe that's why Rhett's probably like, right, you have, I mean, maybe that's also why the whole Maria thing happened. I'm like, oh, I thought you guys were like in an awkward place, but then you go and like see each other at the bar, give each other those like, oh, let's do this eyes. And you go to your, like, her room or a hotel room or whatever, do your thing, and I'm like, that's interesting, I wouldn't have expected that, I thought, like, after last episode, when she's like, right, whatever you're mixed up in, I kind of don't want to be a part of it, I kind of lied for you and everything, but, I don't know, I guess maybe that's because both of them, like, at least Rhett feels like he's kind of got nothing to lose, even though it's like, right, the finals are up, and he was like, wait, what, oh, right, sure, oh, I'm gonna be as prepared as, that. it's not even on his mind, it's just too much stuff going on for that to really be a focus, um, 
And speaking of Autumn, too, I liked the fact is that Perry and her, like, hanging out more. I thought that was interesting. Because obviously she's looking for Royal, but she can't find them the entire episode. But she's hanging out with Perry, and they go to, like, a heavy metal show or something. And uh, it is a thing of, like, they're both dealing with stuff, and just now they get to kind of get that frustration out. And Autumn opens up about most people treating her like she was kind of odd and that she was different. And um, Perry is like, yeah, he kind of feels the same way from his family, too. And she says his family's special, but if they don't, if they see you as something odd or different, then like that's they're in the wrong in that. And obviously, we learn a little bit about Rebecca, too, and why it hit Perry really hard because. Him and, um, it seems like him and Rebecca argued a lot because she wanted to go back home to California after, uh, graduating college, but that was kind of an issue in their relationship, and the night when she disappeared, they also fought, so the last thing between them, and that's, that's always the roughest thing when it's like, right, you never had that opportunity to make things right, and that's why he's got such heavy regret about it, it's like, we argued, and then I woke up a couple hours later, and she was gone, and he's like, I don't know if she walked away and something happened to her, or whether she just got fed up with me, and never knowing those answers, but Autumn's like, right, there is a way of knowing what happened without knowing what happened, you're like, I'm assuming he's, she's correlating to, like, that massive, like, time sinkhole or whatever we want to call the hole so my question then becomes like right there have been disappearing things and people potentially so did she wander out into the, that uh the western pasture and fall in is she lost in time like to once again like we see with at least with uh god what was his name trevor's body he ended up eight days into uh into the future basically and then royal Time travel two day, uh, two years into the future. So who God knows where on the timeline, Rebecca, if she fell in, where she could have landed, past or future. Once again, most instances of that hole have always been future stuff. But you know, I I think something shift is going to have to happen to make it so that past stuff is. But it it almost seems like it's not just stuff related to the hole. It's almost like because that drunk guy, because they even played it at the beginning when Joy was arresting that drunk guy, and it's like, oh, the guy, not, was he drunk? At a very, no, he was the uh, robber at that uh, store. So the question was like, right, he was saying stuff like, oh yeah, people have started disappearing, and you're like, and then obviously Joy, they played it again, seeing the mountain disappear, so it's like, it seems like this time stuff, the epicenter of it is that hole, but it just seems like it's almost enveloped the whole town, and maybe it's slowly like time is eating away and making people disappear. Like there, it's it's more expansive than the hole because it could be like maybe the justification could be like that hole is so deep that it's basically in the crust and the the roots of this town that basically the like little time stuff is like spreading underneath the ground and striking everywhere in the town like the entire town is kind of caught up in this time stuff maybe that's justification that's just me throwing that out there but i'd almost wondered whether they were going to do like really quickly too like whether they want to set up set up a perry and autumn thing i don't know if that's going to be a thing but I, I, this episode made me kind of feel like it might be but it's like no like the rebecca stuff is still prominent and i think it's going to be an important part to this and part of me wonders could that actually be why why um cecilia thought she saw rebecca's like maybe she did because who knows like maybe rebecca has avoided being around because it's like oh i ended up no like i said i, I everything seems to be future wise well, it doesn't mean she still couldn't have gotten flung into the future at some point in time and she's been laying alone because she's like wait what something happened to me but then why wouldn't she come back to the Abbots then? Oh, to be fair, once again, it is about time traveling to a certain point. So it's like, right, we would have to catch up to that. It's been nine months. So like, let's say like on the 10th month, she got flung 10 months into the future. We'd have to get to that 10 month time present day for her to pop up and be like, oh my God, hi. Like I, I've been gone and maybe that's something we'll see. Once again, just like the body because Amy didn't see the body. And all of a sudden on the eighth day, she's on that path. It's like, wait, this uh, Trevor's body's here. Like how did it magically pop up? So... I'm assuming the same principle would apply in that case. Um, Joy, interestingly enough, obviously is still looking into the Trevor situation, and she ends up finding out that uh, talking to one of the people working because it's a you know it's like right some it's like right I'm not trying to keep like she talked to one of the workers it's like right, I'm not trying to like bust you on whatever your circumstances are I just want the truth and it turns and she, he points out not rent 
but Perry. And now Joy's got in her mind, like, right, Perry's the one that's wrong. So it's not just uh, Patricia that thinks it's Perry. Now Joy does too. And she even asked, what was it, Matt? Like, do you think it's possible Perry could have done it? And he's like, honestly, I don't know. Like, well, she specifically said, do you think Perry did it and his family's covering for him? Because the way they're acting, she knows that, and she at least, she can't prove it, but she knows Royal took the belt uh, buckle. Uh, that, and just probably, like, their stories, like, not matching up, and, st well, like, when she was interrogating them last time, like, uh, the, the way they were acting now, because she was leaning more so on Rhett, like, something was, like, off on that front, because they did fight, so she already knew that, but now she's looking at Perry, because I don't think, she was pushing Perry, because she was trying to, she was probably more so thinking, like, Rhett's the one that did something, because I think Rhett is kind of more so the screw-up of the family, so at least, and maybe that's how Rhett perceives it, that's why, once again, I feel like, that's why he's like, I'm gonna be the one that ends up having to take the fall, um, but, that's why she never, when she was kind of shocked to find out, wait, Perry, are you absolutely sure he's the one? Because she was certain it was Rhett and that maybe Perry was covering from that maybe Perry helped him, but it's the other way around. So, that's interesting. Um, and she actually tells this interesting story. Well, I say interesting, but it's actually sad. When she was young and um, living on the reservation, she's like, oh yeah, I had a wife. Like, I wonder what that was correlated to. Like, because they were, were they people that, Cause she just said, I have a white, I have a friend who was a white girl and I'm assuming like these people were like people she knew. That's why they were offering her around to say, Oh, you're, you're friends of so-and-so. So like, let's give you a ride. But she was like, no. Cause she's like, I had this gut feeling. If I got in that truck, I, it was going to be a bad situation. She said no and kept walking home. They started some shit and luckily she was able to fight off and get home. And by the time she talks to her parents, they're like, we can't do anything. White folks don't get charged on the reservation, you know? So She's like, um, she's like, considers herself very lucky because like, I trusted my gut then. And luckily I worked, was, um, I avoided what could have been an even worse situation. Um, and even Matt being like, wow, you never, you've never told me that story before. And for her, I think it is the circumstances of, she's like, once again, like, I trust my gut. If my gut's telling me Perry did it, I think he did do it. So the question now becomes, what is Joy going to do? How she's going, how is she going to handle this? So, um, at the same Uh, at the same time, there's the whole thing with the Tillersons. Uh, we get that little scene between Billy and his dad like uh, some time ago. I, I, I actually uh, skipped over it because obviously at the very beginning, Wayne got back. He's like, yeah, I found it. He's celebrating Billy, uh, Luke, and Patricia coming out like, what the hell are you on about? And then like he has his vision, or memory rather, when he found that hole, Royal as a little kid was crawling out of it. So it's like, okay, so... Does Royal make excuses about... Well, he made a whole point when he was talking to Rhett about, like, oh, I remember my mom. and Like, like how... Maybe that was probably, like, Rhett... Maybe it was uh, Royal at a very much younger age when he was, like, out in the Western Pasture because he's been with his family for a very... Uh, with Cecilia's family for a very long time. So it could have been, like, yeah, around that time he just happened to wander over there and stumble. Because it seems like... It, it's a blind spot for both him and Wayne because Wayne, I guess, has been looking for it the entire time because he found it as a little kid. But said, like, "Oh, maybe it's my imagination. Maybe because he was little and it's a massive pasture. It's a large scale piece of land, and maybe once again, maybe the hole's gotten bigger over the years." And uh, just a thing I'd said before was maybe the hole closed and now it opened up somewhere else on the western pasture. But uh, he tried to find it, I guess, all those years and never could again. Um, just what he experienced, what he saw. Um, obviously it's a conversation that, um, Autumn had had with, uh, Perry about, right. This being bigger than just you, this being bigger than all of us. Cause something, something else is, something's at play here that we just don't quite understand in the grand scheme of this universe. So, but Wayne, when he starts remembering that, like, I don't know what it was, but it took its toll on him and he ended up having a stroke and passed out. So Luke is trying to figure out what to do. Patricia's handling things, being like, right, why did your dad want that land? And it's like, what? you said he was crazy that he was losing his mind. And she's like, honey, you got to understand, people don't, just because you say something doesn't mean you mean it. I'm like, okay. But it's also because she knows, like, I think she also is feeling like, nah, I want to stick it to the, the addicts because I know they're hiding something. Your dad said as much, but also it's like, it's about the land, but it's also like, if I can take that land from him, maybe it has some secrets about the Trevor situation. So Luke's going to be handling that. But 
the point I was also bringing up before was Billy. Billy remembered um, a time he was hanging around with his dad. That was an interesting discussion of what do you think happens to an animal's soul when they die? And his dad says that they get swallowed by the earth, which are like interesting that he would reference that specifically. But he's like, but then like it spits him back out. And once again, very interesting uh, words. And he's like, then he also talks about how he looks at all the animals like he's hunted and like got taxidermied. And he's like, right. I look at all of them and I wonder if like their mothers or brothers or sisters or fathers are all seeking, thirsting for vengeance. And he's like, bring it on. And basically like, I won't make it easy for them. And he's like, and then Billy asks the question, if something, if someone tried, if someone killed you, would you want us to get vengeance for you? And then you have Wayne saying, yeah. So I'm like, okay, so is Billy the one that ends up shooting um, is he the one that ends up shooting Royal? I mean, we know in the future, the one who shot uh, Royal's leg and everything was uh, Luke. But now part of me wonders, like, was there even more motivation for why Luke did that? Um, once again, like, everyone was shocked, but it's still a thing of maybe Luke was under the impression, like, wait, did you guys fake Royal's death or something? He's actually been alive this entire time thing. Because I'm like, because once again, by that point, Cecilia is like, right, you died two years ago. You died in my arms. Which we'll get to that soon enough, but... I don't know. Not unless something happened where Billy tries to kill Royal and ends up getting killed himself. And that just had made... Because I don't remember now off the top of my head whether or not Billy was there. We know some of the people that were there. We know Joy. We know Cecilia. We know... I don't know if Wayne was there. I don't know if Patricia was there. We know Autumn was there. But I don't know if it was like Perry and Rhett and... um. Wayne or Patricia were there, but we'll have to wait and see. But um, now, now that's kind of solidified, like, right, so maybe Billy, if he's not the one that kills Royal, at the very least he attempts to and maybe ends up getting killed in the process. So we'll see about that. Uh, but speaking of that future stuff, uh, Royal goes off, he's trying to get that jewel, the necklace examined, and he takes it to someone to uh, examine because in fact, uh, what's her name? Uh, Nia, that doctor. She um, was hired by uh, what's uh, Wayne to. She he wanted her to like examine the land. Apparently, she, he came to her, um, her like six weeks ago or something like that. And it's like, right? Did you ever any more contact with him? He was like, no. It's like uh, she was like, no. And he shows her the necklace, and she's like, oh, it's interesting. It's amber uh, around the rock, and it's like. We'd have to basically do more testing. She's like, would you want to leave this with me? And he notices in a picture, BY9, the same mining company that came to his land. And he's like, nope, and takes it. And now he's trying to get in contact with BY9, trying to figure out, like, okay, what's this all about? He's still trying to change the future from what it was. I thought that was such an interesting little scene when he was talking to the lady. I think she just labeled us the librarian. He's like, oh, yeah, there, there, that first, and she's almost looking like, Okay, guy, I got this. He's like, oh, contacts, contacts. It's like, because he can't do it himself. It's like, he's not the most technologically savvy person. So I thought that was interesting. Um, you know what I didn't even think about till just now? And I feel stupid till I just thought about it. It's like, it's funny thinking about Josh Brolin in this, uh, in that regard. Because who did he play in Deadpool? Cable, you know? And also, well, Thanos, and there's time travel related stuff in that. I didn't even think about that. That's, this is the, I mean, there might be other properties he's done, but those are like the ones in more recent memory where it's like, oh yeah, here you are doing something, uh, time travel related with the whole, where things play out with Thanos with Endgame and everything. But then also, uh, Cable is from the future. So it's, I find that fascinating. Um, but regardless do all that he can to try and change things. But it also, based on the ending, it kind of seems like he hasn't either done enough or hasn't fully moved in the right direction to change things because he still ends up dead. But I thought it was interesting. So he ends up cracking open the necklace, or at least the rock and the amber or whatnot, and he smears it on his hands. And so he doesn't fully time travel, but I guess it, by getting it flowing through his system, since he's not submerged in it, he's able to just like, time travel there and so but the interesting thing was like it was uh cecilia holding his body she's kind of giving the nod to someone i didn't know what that was about but who was in front of him none other than autumn and who's wearing the yellow and she turns and looks to him and says 
royal, so she can see him. But if you also notice, it looked like she has a necklace on. So either she she must have gotten a new rock in that time frame or something. Uh, that has to be near enough in the future. So it's frustrating because it's like, right, despite everything, she's still here at the center of everything. And maybe she somehow has a correlation to his death. Maybe Cecilia, like, called her because it's like, either, like, they're, like, either they had something to... I was about to say, like, you don't think his family had anything to do with his death to make it... I don't know. Because my mind starts going in directions. I'm like, I don't think that's the case. I was like, do you think he was turning into a bit of a madman? Haha, ha, mad titan Thanos. Uh, and needed to be stopped type of situation. Are they going to make him kind of the fall guy? Because that's also the thing about, like, these things. Like, when you know the end result, it's never always what you think it is. You're like, oh, the end result is going to be under these circumstances. But then it's just kind of whiplash where you're like, oh, wait, it's actually these circumstances. We were misreading the whole situation wrong. Like, what if him dying was actually part of the plan and he didn't realize? Like, that was his attempt to save his family. That he set that up. That he ends up calling an autumn like dying in her arms was like right i needed to do this because i want to be the one who ends up taking the fall for my entire for this situation so that neither one of my sons and my family doesn't have to suffer for it. i don't know let's get throwing that out there but i don't know whether he was just purely frustrated because it's like right i still end up dead and just knowing that autumn was there or that she's still at the crux of all of this um that maybe she knows more than she lets on they, there's the connection there because the whole like right nine years old they don't really have memories before being nine so there, there's something there um but like i said i think it just kind of goes into the fact is like i'm still dead so that must mean i haven't changed enough that time that's also the thing like is time can time be necessarily changed in this regard is it like is you know is his death a fixed point like is it just like you're seeing the future but this is what's going to happen and the fact is that it's still happening means it hasn't changed. I don't know. I think there's a lot you can infer from that. Um, very interested to see where the next episode takes us. I have not watched episode 6 yet, but I will immediately jump on that after uh, finish this, finishing this recording. So I'm excited to see where episode 6 takes us with all of this. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good Bye.